Awesome. All right. We're going to go ahead and get started. Thank you. Thank you so much for everyone who joined tonight. I really do appreciate all of you for coming out um, on this Wednesday, on this hump day. So I am Ashley Williams. Um, some of you may know me as Nicolette. Um, or Ashley Nicolette, and I am the owner of Top Tier Transactions. So just a little bit about um, me and who I am and Top Tier Transactions. I've been in real estate for um, almost four years now, and it has been the most rewarding journey I have ever um, experienced as far as career-wise. Um, with that being said, I came into real estate under family, um, in a family business where I had the opportunity to work on over 400 transactions um, and it was amazing. It by far the most um, rewarding job ever, um, something I can ne never have imagined um, having, but I did come into real estate kicking and screaming. I wanted nothing to do with real estate at all. I wanted nothing to do with the family business. And my mother actually asked if I could just give her one year um, of doing real estate and see how I like it um, before I just quit completely crossed it out. So I did. And um, fast forward, we are here now. Over the years, I have, have encountered a lot of agents who have asked, you know, for my help or, um, you know, asked me how I do or how I manage and if I can help them in their business. So that is really what birthed top tier transactions. I wanted a transaction coordinating company that um, was different from the normal traditional transaction coordinating company. I wanted us to go the extra mile for the real estate agents because we wear so many hats as realtors, right? Like we have to be social media um, experts and videographers and photographers and counselors to our clients and contract specialists. We have to be so much and we have to wear so many hats. So um, I really wanted to start a company of transaction coordinators that um, went the extra mile. So we'll do the heavy lifting for our clients. Um, and so they were able to kind of rush to shore to know everything was taken care of. We've let now added on virtual assistants and a whole host of other things, um, but that is not what today's call is about. Today is about the new group that I just started on Facebook, Top Tier Transactions Team. And if you're here, you are a member of that group, or you may have seen one of my posts. Um, this group, I really wanted to start just to pour into real estate agents, right? We all, there's a, first of all, there's a million Facebook groups. There's a million different places where you can get resources and things of that nature, but it's all scattered, right? I just wanted one centralized place as a new agent to figure out what I, where I can get my bread and butter, right? So that's what top tier transactions team is. It's just a place for us to get our bread and butter. And if you're seeing my screen, this is kind of what we're going to cover today. But um, it, it basically is just our, our way of, um, it's our our way of kind of paying for it, paying for what we know in, in this business. I have been grateful enough to work on over 600 transactions. And I have a lot to give, a lot to um, pour into other agents. And I wanna do it for free. Everything, everyone charges for everything. I just want a community where we all can kind of learn and grow together and experience the, the ups and downs of this market, right? But also be one centralized place that we can have resources. I can keep you guys up to date on what's going on um, in the market and things of that nature. So um that's a little bit about me um and what top tier transactions is and what our group is so if you haven't subscribed already please subscribe um it, it's definitely going to be worth it and it'll be a group that um will be very beneficial so if you know any agents even new agents new agents especially because you know we, we we get out of school and we don't know where to start right um it, it'll definitely be a great resource for new agents as well all right, cool beans. So today I wanted to talk to you guys about not only contracts and compliance, but I want to mainly talk about this lawsuit that's going on, right? Um, if if a lot of you have maybe heard or don't know about, um, or maybe kind of briefly heard about the lawsuit with the sellers that are have sued NAR, right? NAR is the National Association of Realtors. They have decided, um, a couple of years ago that they have kind of been blindsided, so to say, with 
commissions, that they don't feel like they should be responsible for paying commissions to both the buyer agent and the listing agent, so to say, um, that they feel as though that they should not have to couple, calling, couple that the co commission should not be coupling. So what that means is th the listing agent wants to say, okay, I'm going to pay my agent, but the buyer needs to pay their agent right? That obviously can pose a ton of different issues. That can pose um, the way that we do business. It can eliminate a lot of buyer's agents um, and things of that nature. But before we even get to what it could do and what it, what it will do and all that stuff, we're not there yet. So the guilty plea came out. I mean, the guilty verdict came out yesterday, right? Yesterday in the state of Missouri, NAR was found guilty, and they came up with a amount of $1.78 billion that needed to be paid to um, the sellers that were pursuing the case. Now, first and foremost, this case is state level and it's only in the state of Missouri. This is nothing that has reached a national stage and NAR is planning to appeal. So this means that this will be wrapped up in court for quite some time. Now, whether it gets escalated to Supreme Court and things of that nature, time will tell, we'll see. But right now, there is nothing to be super fearful about. I wanna start saying there. But it also, as a real estate agent, should get you thinking because a lot of us deal with buyers who may need down payment assistance or who um, have been saving and just have enough just to get to closing um, with their down payment and their closing costs, right? A lot, the average buyer, um, unless we're talking about luxury, the average buyer won't have their closing costs, down payment and closing costs, and your commission to pay, right? The average buyer won't. In Georgia, our medium um, for home purchases right now is around 400,000. So 3% of 400,000 is what? On top of what you have to bring to the down, the, the closing table for your um, down payment and your closing costs, right? So that really does hurt the buyer's agent, right? It it puts us in a place where we we could potentially be be no longer needed in a transaction, right? But on the flip side of that, I know that the government doesn't want or, you know, these um, courts don't want the buyer, the upper unrepresented buyer, because even though this case has been open and there's probably going to be a lot more copycat cases, there would be, oh, it would be way worse of the lawsuits, if you think about it, of these buyers that's suing real estate agents or are suing sellers and saying that, you know, the seller took advantage of them because they didn't have representation or they couldn't afford representation or whatever case may be. That would open up a whole nother can of worms, right? Which essentially is not good for anyone. It's just not. So we are years out from any change. And my prediction, honestly, it probably is just going to be that we are required by law to do the buyer brokerage agreement. All states don't require that and all brokerages don't, but it may be a requirement and there may be an additional disclosure, right? That the um, buyer and the seller has to share. So I wanted to get on here today to talk about the different things that are coming up from this lawsuit um, with this guilty plea. I keep saying plea. I'm, I guess I'm hoping that we're rewinding time, right? <laughs> So I wanted to talk about this guilty verdict that came up um, and how it can kind of change things for buyers agents, um, but how we can possibly prepare for it, right? Um, I don't want this to be a lecture. I want this to be interaction. So if you want to jump in and comment, please feel free to unmute um, and say your piece, but we can definitely have a conversation about it. And I've also came up with some things that can essentially kind of help us moving forward, even though we are a long ways away of something happening, right? Where the point where um, where we will have to, we'll see the changes and how this will impact us. The other thing I wanted to show you guys were if you just put in, like if you go to Google, right? And just put in lawsuit, seller feels they shouldn't pay a buyer, right? There is tons and tons of information, right? Tons of information on the internet right now that's talking about this class action lawsuit. This means that 
the sellers will, there's going to be a chance that a lot of sellers will educate themselves and they'll realize that they don't have to pay buyer's commission, regardless if we are to the point where NARS, not the Board of Realtors or um, the National Association of Realtors is to the point where they're changing the way that we do business. We still have to worry about the seller over-educating themselves or feeling as though they don't have to pay a buyer, um, even though technically they don't, but it's just the way that we've been doing business for so long, right? Um, or feeling like they are being bamboozled into this, that, and a third, or the buyer feeling discouraged to buy because now they feel obligated to pay a commission, right? Um, that they, they didn't once feel like they had to pay, right? So with this lawsuit, they're seeking for damages and they're also wanting to change the way the commissions are paid, right? Um, there's. I'm sorry. Uh -huh. Yeah, go ahead. So um, I can't, I can't for some reason share my video, but um, that wouldn't this initially or essentially go back to the way real estate was initially created? Because wasn't there this? We had the seller's agent, and then you know there was the uh, co-agent that was also representing the seller. So wouldn't this essentially kind of push us back? take us back to that state if we can't get commission from the buyer um most buyer agents would just go to representing the seller as a co-agent right no so you're talking about sub agency so it wouldn't go back it, it wouldn't be a, a case of sub agency basically what the seller is saying is that right now usually when you when you win a listing right you either you'll be like okay i'm gonna, gonna i'm gonna do this transaction for you for five or six percent and then as a real estate agent, we know that we're going to split that commission in half with the buyer's agent. They're saying that they shouldn't have to pay the buyer's agent commission, that they should only have to pay the listing agent commission. So then that means that the buyer would have to go find, you know, would have to get their money from the buyer themselves or go without, right? Or that means that the buyer no longer is represented by an agent then maybe they're just represented by an attorney because, you know, you have attorney state, George is an attorney state. So technically they could be represented by the closing attorney, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Even though the closing attorney technically represents the lender, they can use an attorney in the transaction um, and save on commission. So it, it isn't sub agency, but it is a matter of, the, it's, a, it's basically the listing, the listing agent, instead of getting five or 6%, they would just get their standard two or 3% hmm. in the commit in the transaction. And that will eliminate the buyer <laughs> agent automatically having that guarantee commission. Okay. So Ashley. Mm -hmm. Sure. So now, I mean, great points. And, um, and like you said, if buyer's agents are no longer going to be or can get paid like their, you know, normal wage, like 3% or whatever. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of buyers go out here unrepresented. And what that's going to cause is possibly them getting into some bad deals too. Now, you did make a point about, you know, the uh, attorneys representing the buyers, you know, but then that's going to increase the attorney fees when they get to closing because now I got to be your agent and I got to be the closing attorney. So at the end of the day, you still going to pay for it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I just think, <clears throat> I don't know how far it's going to go. And like you said, it's just state, it's just state level right now. Mm -hmm. um, but I just really think that um, at the end of the day, if, if they make this a national, you know, law, or whatever the case may be, um, not only do we lose, a lot of buyers are going to lose out too because they're going to be in some bad situations because they can't afford to pay somebody to represent them. Absolutely. Absolutely. I wholeheartedly agree. Think about it. When we go, when buyers go to new construction communities, right? Um, even though it's a brand new home and there's an on site agent there, we still hope to represent the, the, the a buyer in that transaction because. That on-site agent best interest is the builder, right? Mm -hmm. So everyone in a in a transaction needs representation in some kind of capacity. Now, like Gerard is saying, 
if we get into a situation where the buyer goes unrepresented, yeah, those deals get bad. You don't know what you're buying. Maybe the the um, the listing agent, their, their fiduciary duty, duty is to their client. Maybe you weren't educated on getting an inspection, right? Maybe you don't know exactly what you're buying, or maybe you just picked Joe Blow off the street. You didn't get an actual inspector that has credentials to, to be able to tr really inspect your home. Or maybe um, you aren't meeting those contingency deadlines. There's a lot of different things that can happen if we aren't um, if this does go all the way up and they, they try to make changes. So I personally don't think, and I, and, and NAR is a huge company, right? So I don't think that they're going to roll over. I mean, yeah, they were found guilty, but they're planning to appeal. I don't think that they're going to roll over and just allow buyers agents not to get any kind of compensation. But I think it is important to say, Hey, this is what this commission will pay. Four, it'll pay my commission and their commission. The the seller does have the re, have the option to opt out of paying a buyer's agent, but then we have to put that in MLS, right? Commission is not being offered. Um, seller re, re, refuses to offer commission, and then the buyer agent has to negotiate that their commission with the with their client. That 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 is, I think that will probably be the way, worst case scenario. Or NAR was just trying to figure out a way for buyer's agent to still be compensated. Because even right now, there's no standard commission around. Like, we all say, yeah, 3%, 3%, 3%, 2.5%. That's standard. That's just the way that we do business. That's just the way that business has been done for a long period of time. But that is not a set amount. I know some agents um, that charge a minimum of 4% just to them or uh and then if you if you pick different packages they can charge five or six percent that has nothing to do with the agent on the opposite side i know so, we have a, oh i'm sorry uh -uh, go I, ahead. Say, I, know, I know we have a lot to cover but i um going back to that point i actually was researching or looking at the lawsuit and some of the sellers were uh saying that they were upset because um the agents were not putting in the the mls's that had lesser commission um, percentages were their properties were not being shown. So, or they felt like um, they weren't getting as much exposure as those that had 3%. Um, so that would raise an issue as well, right? Because if, if, uh, if I know I'm not getting the commission, um, not to say that I, you know, that will be my first thing, but most buyers that, I mean, most agents are looking at what they're going to get paid. So then that's more houses on the market. Um, Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So it's so funny because I, I brung up this point, this the same exact point um, in a conversation I had previously. Now, just being honest, as a real estate agent, a lot of times we're going to go through that listing, but we'll look at the bottom of that listing to see what the commission is, mm -hmm. right? If there's mm -hmm. two houses that look exa exactly the same on the same street, and they're they're not too much of a difference. Uh, the deciding fact, I mean, you you can show both, but the deciding factor sometimes for you as an agent, even if you don't get the the deciding factor of whether you know house whichever the buyer or seller picks, but you may be more prone to showing the one that's giving three percent versus the one that's paying one point seven five percent or the one that's not paying none. So you can't. I think for the sellers too, realizing you can't expect somebody to work for free for your client, right? And then you, the, also us as real estate agents, we send out properties, right? We're sending out properties. So we're giving, we're showing your property and marketing your property for you. We're, we're doing our, our due diligence and bringing our clients there for you. So I think a lot of sellers will kind of be okay with the fact that they'll still be, especially investors, they'll be okay with the fact that they'll still pay commissions. And then you just have some that'll be the super educated seller that'll say, no, I don't have to do this and things of that nature. So um, any other comments before we kind of start talking about how we can kind of combat this a little bit or kind of prepare ourselves for it? Okay. All right. So 
Um, this kind of leads us into the ways that we prepare for it, right? Um, even though we're years out from this, this should be a wake up call to say, hey, we need to start doing business a little bit different, right? Covering our bases, dotting our T's, crossing our I's, making sure that we are covered because you have lawsuits that's coming out that's saying like, if you sold a home between 2015 and 2022, um, you may have overpaid your realtor, right? Those are the headlines and the titles that's coming out in the, for these um, law, these uh, reports on Google and stuff like that. Just Google lawsuit against NAR, right? The, the most outrageous titles that are catching, that catchy, so they're catching um, a buyer or seller's attention, right? Or just the average person. And then they'll go and say, oh, did you see this? Or did you say that? Or oh, I know you bought a house last year, Jim. Did you do this or whatever? Did you sell, you sold this house or whatever the case may be? It starts the whole conversation. And, and honestly, it makes it seem like us as realtors have done something wrong when all actuality, we just do what we've been doing for so long, even before us, this is what real estate agents have been doing. So um, one thing that we definitely can make sure that we do is thoroughly explain the buyer brokerage agreement and the exclusive listing agreement. Um, on the buyer brokerage agreement, we usually, and I know I'm guilty of this, so you don't have to take ownership um, out loud, <laughs> but I'm guilty of like, saying, look, this is a buyer brokerage agreement and it's um, just a document just saying that you agree to representation and that my broker will represent you, blah, 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 whatever, and just send it to you. We'll give it like a simple explanation. This this agreement will last for a year, um, whatever. It's just standard verbiage, it's standard language, it's a standard document, whatever you want to explain it. It's a standard document that we as realtors use when we represent a client. I have been guilty of not explaining section for section each time I have a client, that for one needs to stop, right? Because we're setting ourselves up to occur a situation that we can we can honestly avoid if we just do our jobs and our due diligence. Now, granted, they sign it, they sign it, but you know, you don't want that, you don't want it to be a situation they'd be like, yeah, I signed it because I felt like I had to, but they didn't explain it to me. How does that look in front of the real estate board? Right. So we want to make sure that we are doing our due diligence and we're explaining each and every section, especially when we when we go to talk about commission section four, because it explains to the buyer that, hey, the seller is not they don't they're not guaranteed to pay our commission. Right. But um, if they do, most times it does eliminate this commission piece. Right. Them having to from them being on the line for the commission, but we still want to explain it to them in detail. And then another way to kind of combat this is we skip over this part all the time, but if you come to the second last page of this document, there's a, a guard form, F149, the um, retainer fee exhibit. This form will help us um, kind of get us to a place where we're not working for free. Right. Because if we get to a place where they say, hey, um, the sellers no longer have to pay your commission. You have to figure it out on your own. And then if the buyer says, OK, uh, if a buyer agrees to pay you a commission, but then gets all the way to the closing table and don't have your commission, that deal can still close with or without your commission. Right. So what we can do is charge a retainer up front and, and, and pay it back to them at closing. Maybe your retainer fee is a thousand dollars. And you don't, so then that, oh, Yolanda, yeah. Uh-huh. I see you got your hand up. Um, I just have a quick question since you're talking about the retainer fee. So when you um do a retainer fee up front, who mm -hmm. holds the money? Would it be your brokerage? Wouldn't it be your brokerage that holds the money? Yes. Okay. All right. I just wanted to confirm that. Thank you. Yes. No problem. So you can do a retainer fee and your brokerage can hold it. Um in the transaction so you know you close and you still need to create like a, a some kind of verbiage just say hey um a retainer fee is due of services or whatever the case may be and you can actually first of all I ask my closing attorney all the time how should I work this and if you have a great closing attorney they're going to give you the verb the wording that you need so Whoever your preferred closing attorney is, ask them for your help in this in this field or whatever, so you can make sure that you are giving the correct verbiage to protect you and the client. 
Um, but create a document that says this retainer fee or even put it on here. Let me show you guys what the retaining fee document looks like. Here it is. Okay, so there's no additional verbiage here. Um, no place for you to put additional verbiage here. So we will create additional document that says the retaining fee of so-and-so amount of dollars is to be paid before services are um before services begin and to be paid back at closing, or maybe you don't have a payback amount, right? Maybe you don't, maybe um you do, and if you do, maybe you say um to be credited back to the buyer at the closing table if closed towards their closing costs or whatever the case may be however you want to phrase it to make it where your buyer feels comfortable like they're not just throwing money away right because not enough agents are going to do this right away um so we have to kind of start passing this around as agents to say it's an option in order for enough agents to kind of spread it and it become like a thing right this is just something that a uh, solution that i came up with right but if you do do a retaining fee um figure out a way for it to feel comfortable for your client right figure out a way for them to say like, you know, when we talk about earnest money, we say, this is good faith money. This is money that you don't, you're not throwing away. You get it back at the closing table, right? Uh, but it's money to show that you are truly dedicated to this um, this property and um, gives the seller ammunition to take their deal off the property, not to sell it to anyone else. Boom. That's our reason for earnest money. Let's find out a good reason why the, the buyer should use you instead of, and over here who's not charging a retainer fee and why, why they should use you, right? Maybe that's an option or maybe you give it back to them in clo at, at closing, right? Maybe you credit towards their closing costs or maybe you put it towards, I don't know, their movers or whatever the case may be. Maybe you help them get different things set up in their house or so whatever it is that they need, you figure out a way to pay it forward back to your client. Um, but also, if the deal doesn't go through and the buyer decides that they don't want to pay you a commission um, or they don't want to um, move forward and you've done all of this work, you still essentially didn't work for free. Make sense? I hope so. I hope so. Okay. Um, the other thing is when we're talking about creating additional documents, for one, we do want to. Oh, go ahead, my dear. Sorry, I, I just see your hand. Um. Oh, go ahead, Dre. Oh, ahead, I'm sorry. Um. That's okay. I was just saying the same thing for like dealing with uh like rental clients too or lease clients. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Um, because you know the commission on leases are typically only a few hundred bucks. So, you know, <clears throat> that's the same thing. And um, because at this point, you don't want to turn anything down, especially if they can qualify for a lease, you know, just have them do the same thing. Um, you can use the same document as, as well on, on rental clients as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. And if, I, if no one heard me, this form, the returning fee is the F149 form. So I was just going to add, so we would add the retainer fee in addition to the percentage we'll be charging um, for a commission. This is well, just so I'm just giving uh, this. This isn't something that you have to do. Right. But I'm just giving different ways or different things that you guys can start thinking about when if if it becomes a situation that we don't get the the outcome that we want with this whole lawsuit thing. Or this is not even, this isn't a bad thing because a lot of times we rip and run these buyers all around town and then they decide they want to let their cousin Sue help them buy the house. Like, mm -hmm. it or uh, a buyer ends up being unqualified and we went through all this stuff and then now they're on Capers report, right? Or whatever the reason it is, or they decide that, the day before closing, they don't want their house. I'm telling you all the things that has happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a great practice that you can implement in your business. So yes, the retaining fee would be um, in addition to. But that's why I said make, make it where you are um, figuring out a way that it makes sense to the buyer. Because why would a buyer, if, they, if, they, if the seller decides they don't want to pay you commission, they have to pay you the 3% and the retainer fee, they may be like, 
I don't, I don't have that kind of money. But if you say, okay, here's my retaining fee and then I'll credit it back to you at closing towards your closing costs, that may make more sense. Thank you. Uh-huh, sure. Yolanda, I see your hand. No, I was just going to make that suggestion, what you just said, credit back to them towards your closing costs. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But Ashley, quick question. Um, going back a little bit, you said that if it gets to the closing table and the seller decides that they don't want to pay, the deal will close regardless. So if they do that and you've told the uh, buyer that you're going to credit back the retainer at closing, um, how would that work? So those are two different scenarios, right? So if we're, okay. if we're charging our client a retainer fee, um, and the buyer is the one that actually has to pay our commission. We're getting our commission at the closing table from the buyer. So we're we're charging a retaining fee up front um, in, in cases where a seller say that they don't want to pay us, right? But if it's a situation where we paid a retaining fee up front um, and the seller is to pay our commission, right? And then they decide the deal terminates or whatever case may be. That means in your agreement, that you create, that you want to make sure that you have verbiage in there that says, I'll refund 50% if it's at no fault of yours as the buyer, right? Or I'll refund 25% of your money or whatever it is. Make sure that when I say talk to your attorney about all the what ifs and things of that nature to protect you, do that. Talk to your closing attorney and they'll help you. Um, Tiffany Halls, great. She's amazing. <laughs> she is amazing. So if you if you're unsure on what to add, add it in there. But if they decide that they don't want to pay, right, then um I would say put in your in your document to say, hey, I'll credit you back 50% if you no longer want to move forward with purchasing a property. Um, or if you if you decide that you do want to move forward, you know, the retaining fee still stands and maybe you guys just move on to the next house. It all depends upon how you create your agreement. Thank you. Awesome. Any other questions about that or any any other suggestions? Maybe we could just ponder ideas about that as well. I think all the information you've given so far is amazing. Um, just being able to know that we have different options um, during this, this, you know, unsure time um, that we can still protect ourselves. Um, like you said, I think just talking to our attorneys to find out the right word and languages to use um, would just help us prepare. Cause I, I knew nothing about, well, I knew about the retainer fee, but I kind of didn't know how to negotiate that. Um, so that's good to know. Yeah. Yeah. Another resource that you guys can have, if you know anyone that's in um, primarily in commercial um, real estate, talk to them. Mo majority of commercial real estate is already in the arena of the buyer pays the buyer agent's commission and the seller pays the seller's commission because of something that happened a while ago. Right. So they're already in that mindset of each agent is paid by their client. Figure out, talk to them and see if you can just learn ways on how they um, negotiate their commissions, how they go about getting those, you know, their commission and how they are guaranteed that commission at the closing table, right? Also, another thing that we can do is um, show it, like when you are going to these listing app appointments and things of that nature, the same way we thoroughly need to go through a buyer brokerage agreement, we also need to thoroughly go through the exclusive listing agreement, not to say that you don't, but bring a copy of that commission agreement as well. And maybe on that commission agreement, you show them, hey, this is what this means yet again. It's matching up to my exclusive listing agreement that says you are agreeing that this this six percent three of my three percent of my commission is going to go to the buyer's agent, and here's the commission agreement between me and the potential buyer's agent, or whatever. So we're over educating, and then we also have a document to say, hey, I, I've explained these documents to you thoroughly. You understand and you agree to the terms of this agreement or whatever the case may be. And and now you've covered your bases even more, right? Um, 
just get it to the point where you are overly protected and you can't you you know seller is going to come back to you later or a seller will potentially file a lawsuit saying that you didn't explain or um they felt bamboozled or whatever it is like no i told i told you right what 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 that could look like or what that would be um as far as commission goes make sense i hope so okay awesome um oh i just i just put up the chat you guys this is my first time doing this so bear with me so essentially what we think is all this correct yeah because you know how sometimes when we go to um listing appointments we sometimes will say um yeah so we'll do six percent uh, and I'll give um, a portion of it to um, the buyer's agent. Or sometimes we won't. Sometimes we'll just say, okay, so commission is 6%, commission is 5%, or commission is typically 6%, but I'll do it for you for 5% because I know your, your situation. And I'll say, okay. But we're not explaining to them that, hey, half of that goes to the agent. The point is, is that we're making sure that we over-communicate with our client. Over, over-communicate. Even with our buyer, we have to figure out a way to educate our buyer and inform them of what what could happen without scaring them away from not wanting to buy a house. So as a real estate agent, when you got your license, you agreed to be a master at negotiations, okay? Because that's just what our job is, just to be master negotiators. <laughs> but when you, when you agree to be in such, um, you have to figure out a way that works best for you if you want to stay in this arena. So explain it to your buyer why it's a possibility they may have to pay your commission. And that's not a conversation you have to have right now why they may have, you know, you don't have to explain to them about the lawsuit, but explain in that document that says that, hey, typically the seller does pay our commission, but if not, if they don't, the commission um, is then paid by the buyer, right? But Typically in, in Georgia MLS or FMLS, I look at properties and I, I do send you properties. I do see if they have commission or whatever you want to word it. Talk to your broker and see what works best for you. But you do want to make sure that you're educating um, the buyer on their options. And you're welcome, Leticia girl. <laughs> Any other questions in regards to the information that was provided? Okay. Um, I, for one, am going to make a standard practice just to bring my commission agreement on my listing appointments. A lot of times the commission agreement is just shared between the buyer's agent. Um, yeah, the buyer's agent, the listing agent. But it could just be another tool that you've, that you've said, hey, I'm showing this to you so you can see it so we don't have any issues later. And maybe just have the, buy, the seller an issue on the side right? Just for extra layer of protection. The whole, the whole goal of today's live is just to make sure that you are protecting yourself as an agent, right? And not, we already are dealing with the insane market. They're saying that next year, 40% of real estate agents will go back to work, right? So hanging in there long enough to get through this market, we don't want to get through this market and then have to deal with, um, loss, potential losses because we didn't explain the way that we were supposed to explain, or, you know, this is, can just open up a whole can of worms. And the other point, the last point I want to make is that each state is different. Each state law is very different, right? So we won't, what we practice here in Georgia is not the same that they practice in Missouri. So this the whole lawsuit thing could very much not affect us in Georgia, or it cannot affect people in Tennessee, right? It could not change anything, but still as a practice, it should have been a wake up call to say, hey, I don't want any problems. So that's all I got for tonight. I hope that was um, informal and I hope you got something out of it. And I will vow to you guys, if you haven't already, I'll put the, um, the link to the Facebook page, um, the group in the chat. 
So then that way you can go ahead and, and subscribe um, and join it. Also, I'll send you um, the link for our YouTube page where we're going to repost all these videos. Um, so you have both of those and you're able to um, kind of join and stay up to date with the conversation. I will keep you updated, keep you guys updated on what is to come. Now, at the end of the month, oh, I'm sorry, you unmuted, Nicole Ambrose. I was. I said, I was just telling you, this was absolutely amazing. I definitely appreciate you for bringing this information to the forefront. I was able to take a lot of notes. Um, I was going to ask you, how often are you going to do forums like this? Yes, that was my next point. Thanks for asking. Um, okay, so if you go to Top Tier Transaction Team, this is the group, right? I have already set out the events. Um through the next year. The only thing is, is one of my biggest partners who has a way bigger group than me right now, but I'm on her heels. I'm coming for her, her numbers. We are going to triple her numbers. So everybody, when you got this call, invite a hundred agents to the group. I'm just kidding. But I, um, I am going to switch over our nights to Thursday nights. So every Thursday I'll be coming with different information and it'll all be different. It'll be a different um way of which we do things some some things will be zoom when i need to show you documents and things of that nature some things will just be alive right um and then we'll also have like guest speakers and things of that nature so look for thursday night consistently every night starting next week no tonight's wednesday but next week we'll go to thursday nights and we'll talk about what's the state of the market right um resources where we have different experts that come on i'm not talking about like the the normal inspectors and the appraisers and the lenders. We all did those. We all know those. We all have one of those, right? And if you don't, don't worry, I got you. But I'm talking about the people that are purchasing hotels and the people that are really still doing good in Airbnb or um, people that are doing, I don't know, storages or whatever, whatever it is that they're doing, like people that are really top producers and that's really killing it in the real estate arena and whatever facet, right? Um, someone who's a beast at um, creative lending and things of that nature. Shout out to Gerard Davis. He's a beast when it comes to um, funding and things of that nature of your projects. Or we have like a super bomb coach who's on this call, Nicole Ambrose, shout out to her too. So anyways, um, we'll have like guest speakers so we can have question and answers with experts and everything like that. So anyways, Thursdays, set your calendars, join the group, and I look forward to having um, having the opportunity to communicate and talk to all of you. Can I make a little request? Yes, girl. Just a little, just a little one. You know, one one of these uh, lives. Can you do like uh, negotiation tips? Oh yes, that's a good one. Like, I sure can. As new realtors or even seasoned realtors, like different ways. Yes. 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 Maybe put out a poll on the page and you could put the topics that you really want to hear. That's a great idea. Mm. Um, but yeah, let's do negotiations. I know some super bomb negotiators and how you know they're super bomb negotiators because they've been top producers since they for the past 10 years, right? Obviously they're doing something right. No, but I, I will get some master negotiators in here um, that can really help. And we'll I'll do some research and things of that nature. I don't want it to just be me all the time. I want you guys to see other people. So yeah, I'll get that topic together. Any other requests? None? Okay. Just want to say thank you so much. We love you. Thank you for just taking the time out to do this. This is this was really phenomenal. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining, you guys. I, I truly do appreciate it. Awesome. All right. So tell a friend and tell a friend and tell a friend to tell another friend about Top Tier Transactions team on Facebook. Um, I'm hoping that we really can grow this to a big, 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 big group um, to really be helping hands to each other. So thank you so much for joining. I will see you guys next thank Thursday. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you. I will see y'all next Thursday. See you later. All right. See ya.